Hey, Chad here with ChadCar.net, and today I'm going to jump right into a quick mixed reality tutorial. You're going to see the tools that you need to get started, and you're going to see a uh, project that starts from nothing to actually be running on the device itself. But before we start, let me first talk about the term mixed reality. Originally, I, I used the term to strictly talk about the HoloLens. I mean, in my mind, you had virtual reality, you had augmented reality, but the HoloLens was its own thing because it understood the world around it. But then the Vive, it had sensors, and so I had to kind of modify my definition somewhat, and it just ended up that my definition was wrong. Mixed reality is not a specific thing. It's definitely not restricted to a specific device. It's the blending of the physical world and the digital world. It's a spectrum on the virtuality continuum. So the mixed reality term was actually coined in the white paper that you see referenced at the bottom of this. And it's created by Paul Milgram and Fumio Kishino. And you can see here they said you had the real environment on one end and the virtual environment on the other. And then you had this augmented reality that was just on the other side of the real environment. And you had this augmented virtuality which is just on you know, the inside of the virtual environment. So on one end you have the physical world, on the other you have the complete digital world. And again, this is also referred to as the mixed reality spectrum. So most mobile phones on the market today have little to no environmental understanding capabilities. So the experiences they offer, they can't mix between physical and digital realities. The experiences that overlay graphics on video streams of the physical world that is augmented reality. And then the experiences that occlude your view to present a digital experiences, that's virtual reality. And the experiences enabled between these two extremes is mixed reality. Now, most augmented reality and virtual reality offerings available today, they just represent a very small part of this overall mixed reality spectrum. And in fact, Microsoft has built Windows 10 with this entire spectrum in mind. Uh, the operating system allows blending digital rep representations of people, places, and things with the real world. So there's different devices that span this mixed reality spectrum as well. So you have the holographic devices, and these are kind of characterized by the device's ability to place digital content in the real world as if it was really there. And of course, the, really the only device that does that currently is the HoloLens. But then you have immersive devices. And these are characterized by the device's ability to create a sense of presence, right? You're immersed. And it hides the physical world and replaces the entire physical world with a digital experience. So this shows some of the devices and where they exist on the mixed reality spectrum. So on the far left, you kind of have AR kit, AR core, and an example there of somebody holding a phone and seeing augmented data there. Also on a mobile device, you see the absolute other end of the spectrum with the Samsung uh, Gear VR, and it's actually a phone inside of a headset, okay? And it's totally a digital reality. And then there's other devices that fall between these two. Now, it doesn't matter if a device is connected uh, to a PC or self-contained. That doesn't determine whether the device is a holographic or immersive. I know Meta 2 is coming out with a holographic device, but it is tethered to the PC, for example. And the Samsung VR is not tethered to anything. It's your own phone and it's a immersive experience. But currently today, there's no device that can run experiences across this entire spectrum. Instead, they support a very specific range uh, within this mixed reality spectrum. Now, over time, the expectation is that new devices will expand inside of that range. And so holographic devices will become more immersive and immersive devices will become more holographic, for example. Now, here are some examples of apps and where they are in this mixed reality spectrum. 
So on the far left, we have Pokemon Go. And on the far right, we have 360 degree videos. And then some other apps is like Skype on the HoloLens, which is more in the physical reality, but it has more elements that's in the real world and based off mapping, it looks like it actually interacts with the real world. Same thing with Fragments or Ro Robo Raid, where they actually take into consideration the spatial mapping data. But Holotor on the Hall Lens is more of an immersive experience, about the best you can get of an immersive experience on the Hall Lens itself. But if you run the Holotor on an immersive headset, then you're getting much further towards the digital reality side of things. Now, when designing your app, your game, your experience, it's best to think about what part of the spectrum you want to target. You know, both AR and VR are fantastic. And at some point, you know, the same device will probably be able to handle the both. Uh, but until then, you know, think about the games, the apps, or the experiences that you want to make and where they should fit in here. So with that, let's actually create a quick experience inside of Unity. Well, let's get started. You see, I just have a project here getting started with MR for Mixed Reality. So I'll just hit Create Project. All right, so Unity is loaded. So I want to bring in the uh, Mixed Reality Toolkit. So I'm going to go to GitHub. We have the Mixed Reality Toolkit for Unity. I'm going to go over here to uh, Releases and grab the latest Mixed Reality Toolkit uh, for Unity. Now I'm actually just going to grab the Unity package. All right, I'm going to get this out of the way. I'm going to drag that Unity package here into Unity. We'll import everything. Okay. Now, the uh, Hollow Toolkit's imported, which is actually the Mixed Reality Toolkit. They're in the middle of changing the name. And so what I'll typically do is actually just create a new folder and call it MRTK. And then drag the toolkit into there. Now, that's not something you need to do, uh, but it's something that I do. Mainly to keep me from calling it the Hollow Toolkit like I have for the last year and a half. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create another folder here called Scenes. And we'll just save this scene as main. Now you'll notice we have this Mixed Reality Toolkit up here. So we're going to go to Configure and Apply Mixed Reality Project Settings. So we want to target the Universal Windows Platform. We want to enable XR. We want to build for Direct 3D. And we also want to target occluded devices. So you'll probably hear me hear me say occluded and immersive. And I mean them in the same way. Occluded as in you can't see through the device. So the hall lens is a transparent device. You can see through it. Uh, but these immersive headsets are occluded. And I use the term immersive because you are immersed inside of that virtual world. We can also enable the Xbox controller support. And of course, our .NET scripting back end would apply. And this is a good sign. We want to be able to, we want to see this message telling us about the Xbox controller support. Uh, it's going to update our input manager assets. If you don't see that, then definitely click on um, the apply project settings again and make sure that target occluded devices in the Xbox controller, if, that, if you want to use that, are both checked. I've had it in the past, sometimes there's a bug in the toolkit itself where you'll select those, hit apply, and it doesn't actually do it. You have to do it a second time. But it took it, so we're good there. We can also take a look at our build settings, and you can see we're now targeting the Universal Windows platform. I'm going to say when I do this, I want to use C Sharp projects, I'll add my open scene, and we'll close that. When you come up to the uh, configure and UWP capability settings, and this is so that if your app or game or experience needs these different uh, functionality of the device, then this is getting permission from the user to use those. So for example, microphone um, is one that you'll probably use, especially in these immersive headsets. If you're making an app or a game that's running both on the hall lens and an immersive headset, uh, then you might want to select per spatial perception and that will work 
for the HoloLens. That's going to give you the spatial mapping data. Uh, but of course, you're not going to get that data in the immersive headset. Okay. For now, for this, I'm just going to select microphone, even though I won't really need it. Hit apply. And you could also get there by going back to build settings and clicking on player settings. And under publishing settings is where all that information is. And so you'll see a microphone is selected there. And while we're in here inside of player settings, I will mention this. We can select this XR setting. And if we want to debug in Unity for a while before actually having to use our headset, we could just uncheck this virtual reality supported for now. And, uh, you know, save the scene, uh, save the project, you know, and play. And while we don't really have anything here, this is not going to launch uh, the Mixed Reality Portal or force us to utilize the headset to test out our game. So, depending on what you're after and, and when, uh, where you are at in your development cycle, you may or may not want to uh, enable virtuality support it. Um, but that XR setting is what we did when we said apply project settings and that enable XR, that's what I did. Just check that box and make sure Windows Mixed Reality was selected. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to actually delete the main camera here and I'm going to search for camera and bring in the camera parent. So this Mixed Reality camera parent allows us to uh, work with these immersive headset as well as the hall lens itself it actually has this mixed reality camera manager and it has opaque display settings as well as a transparent display settings and so for the opaque it uses the sky box it sets the near clip to this and the quality settings to ultra because chances are you can be running this on a hefty pc versus on for the hall lens or transparent display it's going to change the near clip to you know 0.85 so it's a little bit further away from the user so it doesn't cause discomfort. It's going to clear the flag to solid color instead of skybox and have that color to black. And then the quality settings is going to be what fastest or, or what they now call very low. Okay. Let's go ahead and add in this, this mixed reality camera parent also includes a boundary. And so when it uh, launches, it actually creates this little floor quad in front of you um, but I'm also going to create a 3d cube in front of us we'll just move out in front of the camera maybe about uh, seven meters and we'll save the scene and we'll hit play and so as I'm looking around here you can actually see the floor that spawned and again that cube so that's the mixed reality um, parent we want. Just like Holland's development, I also like to grab in uh, the input manager. So I'll bring in the input manager prefab. And I also like to uh, bring in the default cursor because the immersive headsets also utilize gaze. And you need to let the user know what it is they're looking at. And the default cursor can help with that. So save the scene again and we'll hit play and now we actually see these uh, our hands here much like we would do if we were doing HoloLens development and that's because of the input manager now if we wanted this to play on the headset itself again we just need to go to our uh, player settings and make sure that virtual reality supported is checked okay We'll save, uh, save the scene, save the project, and we'll hit play. And now this is bringing up the Mixed Reality Portal. So we'll hit play here so you can actually see it. And so now you can see this a virtual world where I have the floor and the cube in front of me. So that's really all there is uh, to get going with these occluded mixed reality headsets. In my next video, we're going to start a multi-part tutorial series where I'll create a full game that's going to utilize the features of these immersive headsets. So I certainly hope that you'll join me there. 
If you're not subscribed to the channel, feel free to do so. Therefore, uh, you might be reminded at some point in the future that there's videos here for you to enjoy. I hope you have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video.